Yes, hello everyone. So I'm, I'm also going to talk about collider probes. Um, yeah, so some, some will overlap with what Diego already said. Um, yeah, this work um, has been done in collaboration with Martin Bauer and Matthias Neubert and is based on some of these papers and partially on some work in progress. There we go. Okay, so um, as an outline, yes, um, I'll give a very brief motivation, but I keep it very brief because, yeah, we heard a lot about the motivation in these last few days and then also Diego gave a nice introduction. Um, and then the, the process I want to talk about from, yeah, for looking for ALPS at the LHC is basically, um, yeah, this, this diagram over here. So we want to look at um, exotic Higgs or also exotic Z decays. So this is an example uh, process where we produce the Higgs uh, just in a, in a standard model process. So in some of the examples that I show, we assume gluon-gluon fusion. Um, then, um, yeah, the Higgs can decay into a Z and an ALP, or it can also decay into two ALPs. And then the, the ALP here, by, denoted by A, um, can decay further into photons or into leptons. And so basically, my outline is that I want to show you the effective Lagrangian, and so I'll introduce these couplings, and then talk a bit about yeah, this, this first coupling, so the, the Higgs decay, then about the, the ALP decays, um, then say about what, how we estimated the region and parameter space that we think the LHC can probe. Um, yeah, there is a connection that we can make to um, G minus two, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this, and yeah, that's what I want to tell you. <coughs> okay, yeah, so um, yeah, we've heard this all many times. So we started from a very phenomenological point of view, um, yeah, to look for these light, light pseudoscalars. <coughs> of course, the motivation for them is, as we heard, yeah, the QCD axion, but generally these light pseudoscalars can appear um, uh, if we have a a broken global symmetry, they can be mediators to the dark sector, they can explain various anomalies, so it's an interesting thing to look at. Um, large regions of the parameter space have already been excluded by many, many different experiments. Yeah, we, we saw some of these already, and yeah, I'll show it again. And so we can we think that we can add a region to this by looking at these exotic hex decays. Okay, here's my effective Lagrangian. Um, a is the ALP, so we have, a, we have a kinetic term, we technically also have um, yeah, a, a mass term that breaks a shift symmetry explicitly, and then this A couples um, to fermions, it couples to, to gluons, to, to photons, and to the Z. Um, yeah, unfortunately we chose a, um, yeah, a relatively unusual normalization, so we have this, um, this lambda here, which um, is, is, is a heavy scale and is related to the um, axion decay or alp decay constant. So I have here the, the relations that will give this Lagrangian in maybe in a form that you're more used to and that we've seen in the past talks. Yeah, so this lambda is just 4 pi f and these couplings often are also suppressed by a factor of 4 pi. But so somehow we started with this Lagrangian and then didn't want to change everything. Um, right, so um, yeah, so this lambda is, is, uh, yeah, is, is the heavy scale where some, some new physics comes in and we take it as a, as a cutoff scale for our Lagrangian. So what we see here is that yeah, the ALP couples to, um, to fermions and to gauge bosons, so that means it can decay and technically can decay into photons, into leptons, but also yeah, could decay into hadrons. Um, right, so... At the dimension five level, there's not yet any coupling to the Higgs. So what happens uh, with the Higgs? And, and these interactions appear only at higher order. So they appear at um, dimension six or seven. So, there, so we have this dimension six and dimension seven operator. Uh, we have um, d mu a, d mu a coupling to uh, phi dagger phi, phi is um, yeah, our Higgs here. And so you see that um, this process can mediate or yeah, can can give us the process or the decay of Higgs to AA. And then we have a dimension 7 operator, which is um, d mu a coupling to the, to, to the Higgs current with a, with a phi dagger phi at the end. I'll say a few more words about this in the, on the next slide. And, um, yeah, and this operator gives us a process of Higgs to ZA. And yeah, in the next few slides, I want to talk about these two processes in a bit more detail and see how, how they can be used. Um, to, to probe these helps. 
Okay. So we have, yeah, the exotic Higgs decays. Um, the first process I want to say a few more words about is Higgs to ZA. Uh, we can com compute the contributions to the width of Higgs, um, yeah, Higgs to ZA. Um, it de depends on the, on the Higgs mass and on lambda. And for the, for the coupling, so this, this guy in the um, yeah, absolute value is, yeah, is, is, the, is the coupling squared, and this gets different contributions. So if we start from the right here, um, yeah, we get the dimension seven contribution. So this is just the operator that, um, yeah, that I showed on the previous slide. Uh, then we get another contribution from the, from the, from the top loop. Exactly, yeah, because the, the Higgs and also the A, they couple mostly with the mass, so the top gives us the, yeah, the largest contribution. So we get, we get a contribution from this, um, from this loop. And another contribution, um, yeah, in principle, um, well, there's a little subtlety that I want to talk about, could come from um, a dimension five operator. So um, this was dimension, dimension seven, but um, yeah, naively one would think, oh, there's also this dimension five contribution, but um, looking at this in more detail, we realized, uh, yeah, this, this guy vanishes by the equations of motion. So by just um, yeah, using the equation of motion for the Higgs, this operator vanishes. However, there's a, there's a little subtlety, which is that, yeah, this, this first operator is not there. However, there could be, in, in particular models and particular UV completions, there could be um, a non-polynomial operator, which, um, yeah, looks like this dimension, or is a dimension five operator, is like the first dimension five operator um, with this log phi double phi attached to it. Um, this is often, or uh, is known maybe from um, double Higgs production, where there are also these operators um, that have, yeah, just the phi dagger phi, or you have this log. Um, yeah, and these, and these kind of operators appear in models where a new heavy particle, so a new heavy fermion, um, gets its mass um, only through electroweak symmetry breaking. Um, what makes this particularly interesting here is that the polynomial operator, so the, the normal dimension five operator, vanishes, and so the only one that dimension five that could be there is this, this non-polynomial guy. So in the following, we don't really make any assumptions on which contributions are present. We just take um, everything that is in brackets as an, as an yeah, effective coefficient and show the results in terms of this effective coefficient. But uh, yeah, just numerically to give you an idea of how, how big the contributions are. So there can or cannot be um, this dimension five contribution. Then the top loop gives us about a yeah, 15 or 16% contribution. And this dimension seven operator here um, yeah, gives a 0 0.03 contribution. So, so this, this coefficient could be, and therefore the process could be enhanced um, yeah, in particular models. And if it was enhanced, it would give us a hint as to what a UV completion could be. Okay, so is, is this a feasible thing to look for? Um, here in this plot we have, we show the decay rate of um, Higgs to ZA um, normalized to the standard model rate of Higgs to Z gamma. Um, and in terms of the two couplings, that, that contribute to the process. So we have once the, the coupling of the, of the alp to, to tops. So this is this top loop contribution and then the dimension seven contribution. And so that shows us that for reasonable values of these uh, Wilson coefficients, so of roughly, um, yeah, if they're of order one, then we get a similar rate of Higgs to ZA as, as there is in the standard model of Higgs to Z gamma. Yeah, we want opposite signs. And yeah, if we're in the region with opposite signs, then it can even be a factor of two or three larger than the standard model rate. And since uh, Higgs to Z gamma, um, yeah, is one of the target processes for the for run two of the LHC um, with a lighter luminosity. So that means that also this would be feasible to look at. Okay, and this process can be enhanced if there was this um, extra dimension five contribution. So here we have this dimension dimension 5 contribution to the coefficient, and on the y-axis, the, um, the ratio of Higgs to ZA over um, Higgs to Z gamma. And um, yeah, these lines are for different masses, different alt masses. So we have here 1, 10, 20, and 30 GeV. 
And so, um, yeah, you see, depending on, on the size of this coefficient, this can really be enhanced by, by a factor, by an order of magnitude or so. Um, this is usually expected to, or in most models, would be expected to be loop suppressed. So we'd be down here by 1.1, but so this can still be a factor, a factor of a few enhanced. Okay, so this makes it interesting. And to, yeah, so, so from now on, I don't assume anything about this dimension 5 um, contribution being present or not, but to yeah, give a few more constraints that we already have on this process. So there is um, a current effort limit um, that has been measured yeah, from Higgs coupling measurements on the branching ratio of the Higgs to yeah, B7 particles, and the constraint is roughly around um, 34%. Um, this gives us a bound on the width of the Higgs um, to, to, new, to new particles um, that should be less than 2.1 MeV, and so therefore we already get a constraint on this, on this yeah, effective um, coefficient, that, which tells us that it has to be less than around 0 0.7. Okay, um, yeah, to give you a bit of an idea of the numbers that we get for, for this process, um, in order to get a 10 percent branching ratio, we would need a coefficient of around 0 0.3. And from the top loop and the 97 operator alone, we'd get a branching ratio at the, um, yeah, at the order of 10 to the minus 3. OK. Um, yeah, I'll see. I have another slide on the final states. But so what are the interesting final states here? So we have the Higgs decaying to a ZA. The Z can, of course, decay yeah, in uh, all the all the known channels, and this A could decay into gamma gamma, into leptons, into jets, or technically also, or also invisibly, and so that gives many channels that one could look at to yeah to to probe this scenario. Sorry. Yeah. I mean the present bound is like uh, is not compatible with the EFT, right? I mean basically the EFT this bound has no meaning, no? Because they I mean you get like zero point uh, 40 uh, TV, but this means uh, that I have to, uh, in your parameterization, I have to divide by 100. So I would have the radial mode lighter than the X. So this, I mean, also the radial mode will enter in the X branching ratio. Everything will be different. Right? Um, well, I think, I don't know, I think up to this order, I don't think the perturbation theory breaks down. I mean, the, perturba the, t the, the effect EFT that you are writing uh, implies that the radial mode is heavier than the X, right? Lambda is the radial mode. Yes. Now, if I get uh, a bound on lambda oh, okay. that is weaker, that lambda is scaled by 100. Right. That is weaker than so let's say. But so so what we take we take lambda to be completely yeah independent really of the, we set it at the T V scale. A posteriori statement. Right. Say you check the bound and then you say is it compatible with the EFT? Right. And the answer is no. Right? So if no, I, no. I think in so. The future it will be so. She will be okay in the future. No, yeah, yeah, I'm just saying this for is not now is incompatible. Wait, why do you say that? Because you divide by 4 pi, 1 TV, you get 100 GeV, and this is a start that runs in the loop. Yes. And then they say, OK, it's uh, comparable to the Higgs, so therefore I should not use EFT because because it's the same. Uh, but maybe but, but I'm if it's a couple of Oh, if you say F. The same you, should, you could also say for the top, no? It's 170 GeV, it's comparable to the Higgs, but you know that the EFT works perfectly. Now, if you have a strong coupling, maybe oh, but strong can be 1.5 instead of 1, right? you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So in the end, uh, I will uh, keep bugging him and you're okay. <laughs> 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 no, okay, wait, like, yeah, maybe we can talk about this a bit more. Yeah, after. Um, okay. Yeah, then for the Higgs to AA, the other process we considered, also there we get some um, different different contributions, so we get a contribution from the dimension 6 operator that I showed um, initially, so we have this first diagram, we also get some, some loop contributions, so we have, um, uh, yeah, we get um, a top loop contribution, and then we get also a contribution from the Z or the W running in the loop, but that's very tiny. Again, for the coefficients, 
roughly what we get. So the, the top loop gives a relatively large contribution. The, yeah, this, this guy with the, with the Z or the W running in the loop is very small. Um, yeah, we can compute the width, and then we can also um, yeah, consider, consider this process. OK, and to go through the similar steps, we have the bound on the branching ratio, because that's the bounds on the width. And so this coefficient should be roughly less than um, 1.3. Um, for the branching ratio of 10%, we need a coefficient of around 0 0.6. And from the top loop uh, alone, we get a branching ratio of 1%. The interesting final states in this case, so we have Higgs to AA, the A's decay independently. But so what is um, these, these A's could decay into yeah, gamma gamma, so we have a 4 gamma final state or 4 leptons, uh, for jets or invisibly. But then, of course, we could also have gamma gamma and 2 leptons and... Uh, yeah, so could have the mixed final states. Okay, yeah, I wanted to say just a, just a few words about the ALP decays. So the yeah, if we are, if we just write down the operators that that we have, then um, yeah, there there are actually many channels. So this um, this plot shows the, the the mass of the ALP versus the the width of the A into a certain final state. So here we have the the final states. Um, at very, very low masses, the only possible um, yeah, decay mode of the ALP is actually is into photons. Um, once it's heavier than, than twice the electron mass, the electron um, channel opens up. So this blue line is the decay into electrons. So, uh, sorry, blue line, is, blue line is the decay into photons. Then green is into electrons. And then the muon channel opens up at some point. And this plot is, is just the same, but for, for larger masses. So so we're going to larger masses and have also larger widths. Um, again, the blue line is into photons. Um, yeah, this, this gray region um, is, is, the, is the region where we have the, of the QCD scale. So below that, a decay into three pines is possible. And then later on, this red line will be a decay into gluons, which would be the dominant, yeah, the dominant mode. And then here in this region, you see there are lots of channels that open up. So there would be a decay um, into mu mu, tau tau, also into heavy quarks, so cc bar, bb bar. And then it really depends on the individual model as to what, um, yeah, what exactly the, the, the branching ratios are and which channels are present. Um, yeah, we focused on gamma gamma and also, yeah, and on leptons. OK, so how do we, did we prove um, the parameter space? Um, yeah, we, we made an estimate to, um, to, find that, uh, yeah, to find the region that we think can be probed at the LHC. And for this, um, we considered the average decay length because we want, we want the ALP to decay inside the detector. Um, to consider the decay length, yeah, the decay length is just given by yeah, the relativistic beta and gamma um, factor um, over, the, over the total width. And then we also have yeah, this sine theta because we want to consider only the decay length in the perpendicular um, direction, so perpendicular to the beam to the beam axis. Um, yeah, another important point for us is the fraction of alps that decay before they have traveled a certain length. Because we want the alp to decay before, yeah, so inside the detector. So if it decays into photons, we want it to decay before it has, re or inside the electromagnetic calorimeter. So we want it to decay um, within 1.5 meters of the, yeah, of its existence. If it decays into leptons or, yeah, into electrons, then we want it to decay before the inner tracker. So that would be roughly, um, yeah, a decay length of two centimeters. And so this F function, um, yes, is the, um, exponential decay, and that gives us gives us the fraction of alps um, that decay before they have traveled this certain uh, this specific distance. Now we define um, an effective branching ratio. So here, for the example of Higgs to Higgs to ZA, where the where the where the Z decays into leptons and the A into certain final states, um, this is of course given by these by these different branching ratios, and then we take into account this this fraction of events. Um, as to how many decay before they travel a certain distance and the branching ratio of the z. And what we require now is that uh, we, so if we have, we have the Higgs production cross section, we have this effective branching ratio, and we require um, 100 events in the final state. So this is not a full fledged analysis at all, it's really just an estimate. Um, but so from other um, Higgs, 
Hicks decays into a certain yeah, Higgs decays into, into photons where analysis have been done. Um, they're roughly sensitive to yeah, roughly a hundred a hundred events. So this is why we why we take this number. Okay, and here's here's what we find. Um, yeah, so this plot is maybe a bit a bit more familiar than what we had in the previous talk. We have the um, the mass of the alp here. So you see that it ranges many orders of orders of magnitude. And then here we have the coupling of the alp to photon photon. And um, these are all the many, many constraints on the left, these are all the constraints that exist. Um, so we have yeah, the cosmological bound, supernova, um, and so on. And the region that we think can be probed at the LHC is this green, green triangle over here. Um, this is yeah, what can be probed by looking for Higgs to Z, ZA. What makes this interesting and also complementary to the other regions that, um, that have already been probed, so you see lots of or many experiments have probed the region on the left, and these are, um, this corresponds to very, very long lifetimes of the ALP, because all these experiments yeah, look, for, look for ALPs that come from, yeah, from, from the sun, from stars, and so on. Um, while we require relatively short lifetimes, so we want, um, yeah, so we want the ALP to decay inside the detector, so it's also a short, um, short decay length, and so, and this corresponds to slightly larger masses, and therefore, yeah, this, this region is complementary to the to the other ones that have been done. Um, okay, one yeah one one point to mention is that of course our our parameter space is yeah three dimensional in some sense. So we have the coupling to photons, but then we also still have the coupling to um, um, so Higgs to Higgs to ZA coupling, and so these um, solid dashed and, and dotted lines correspond to different values of. Of this, of this coupling. Um, what makes this uh, search relatively strong is that we do not require a branching ratio of A into photons of 100%, um, because uh, yeah, the branching ratio actually um, kind of cancels out. And so therefore, um, yeah, looking for a large, if we want to look for a large coupling, then the branching ratio um, can actually be as low as uh, yeah, 3 times 10 to the minus 4. So, and so, and then this will all be can then probe the same region. So that makes it, yeah, that makes it relatively robust. I mean, often, often a branching ratio of 100% has to be assumed. Yeah, if we go to smaller couplings, then the branching ratio has to be larger, but still, um, yeah, 50% or so. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, this alp photon coupling can be probed if the alp decays predominantly even in, into, into other particles. Ah, uh, yes, and what I haven't mentioned, but I'll come back to it, is that there is a region in parameter space, this red region, where these Alps can explain the G minus two anomaly. Um, this is this red region over there. Um, these are very well, especially in this normalization, this red band corresponds to very, very large uh, couplings. But um, yeah, at least this, this region on the right hasn't hasn't been excluded yet. So I guess that would give gives an extra motivation to look for these channels. Um, yeah, one point I want to make is that here this um, C, this coupling um, Higgs to Z H, um, these are relatively large values compared to C gamma gamma, which is around I don't know, 10, to the, 10 to the minus six. So maybe, um, so this is a relatively large hierarchy in the couplings. So another good way of presenting these results, which is maybe even a bit, yeah, is more of a real exclusion plot, is to have a, to have a plot like this, where here we have this coupling um, Higgs to Higgs to ZA um, on this x-axis and the coupling to photons on the y-axis. And then this green region um, is the region that can be probed for a specific mass. Now, if we um, assume just a very simple model where this, um, both these couplings, so Higgs to ZA and also Hig um, A to gamma gamma, are given simply by the top loop, then this gives us um, yeah, depending on this coupling to the top, gives us some, um, yeah, would give us a model over here. So, so on this line, this would be the line that can be probed if we, if we assume this model. And so if we, if we take a specific point, so here of um, yeah, 10, 10, G, 10 GeV, um, a coupling Higgs to ZA of around 0.1, then this gives us actually a point just in the, in the tip of this triangle. So this, yeah, so this, this difference in the hierarchies 
um, or this this hierarchy in the couplings, um, yeah, can, can be can occur in relatively simple simple models. So I just uh, I want to understand yeah. uh, th this plot again. So the, the red li line that you're plotting are the values given by top loops. Yeah. Okay. I see. So and and the, that is your exclusion region. This is the exclusion region. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yes. For for so this is the exclusion region for different values of the branching ratio um, of eta gamma gamma okay. for for a fixed mass. Okay. For for Higgs to AA, um, yeah, we get uh, we get a similar result. So the yeah this this triangle is bounded by now I guess by, by half the Higgs mass while yeah before it was bounded by roughly thirty GeV, um, but we get a similar similar triangle that can be probed in this um, in this process, and again for different values of the coupling and branching ratios. Okay, so. Um, yeah, I want to say a few words about what has already or what has already been excluded. So, what are the current bounds? Um, current bounds on Higgs to Z A. Um, this channel hasn't really hasn't hasn't been looked for, um, but there have been yes, there, of course, there have been searches for um, Higgs to Z Higgs to Z gamma. So, in the region where the two where the alt decay into two gammas, where the two gammas cannot be distinguished. Um, which is roughly below, yeah, I think below 100, 100 MeV or so, we can get the bound from Higgs to Z gamma, yeah, which is plotted on the left. And if we put it into this parameter space, it was what was correspond to this little um, green triangle over there. Um, for, for Higgs to AA, there have been more searches. Um, again, in the low mass region, so over there on the, on the very left, um, the, the decay products of the, of the A cannot be distinguished and we can get a bound from Higgs to gamma gamma searches. Then there has been an atlas search that looked at Higgs to four gammas, I think at 100, 200 and 400 um, MeV. So these are these three, three dots over there. Um, yeah, it might not be quite the right thing to connect them, but um, yeah, we thought this is probably um, yeah, reasonable. And then there's also a Higgs to four gamma search um, from roughly a 10, 10, 10 GeV to, to 60 GeV. And these are these three regions over there. And if we translate them into, into this plane, then what, has, what can be excluded is this green, yeah, this green triangle over here, and this is the Higgs to 4 gamma search. And so, yeah, we, we think it would, be, it would be really nice to, to fill this gap. Um, yeah, there are probably different analysis strategies that have to be done for um, heavier, for heavier Alps or lighter Alps. And um, yeah, but this should be very doable at the LHC and the, at the second, second run of the LHC. Okay. Yeah, okay, so this is already my last slide. I just wanted to motivate this connection to the G minus two. So there has been a uh, persistent three sigma deviation. Um, yeah, between the measurement and the prediction um, of, of the G minus 2. And this G minus 2 can actually be explained um, by an ALP. Uh, and the explanation um, comes from these two, two diagrams over here. So we have to compute this, this first diagram where the, where the ALP couples only to from muons. And this actually gives a contribution in the wrong direction. But then what helps us is the second diagram where the ALP couples to muons and also has a coupling to gamma gamma and to, to z gamma. So if we um, yeah, take these two, uh, compute these diagrams, and then require to give the right, the right contribution uh, to, the, to g minus 2, then we find that this can be done in, this, in the parameter space, um, in a parameter space, yeah, depending on the coupling. So we have, here we have the alt coupling to, to muons, here we have the coupling to two gammas, and you see these are the one to three sigma regions. Um, yeah, that it can be explained in, in these regions. So it can be we need different signs. And yeah, one coupling always has to be of the order of one, and the other one, yeah, can either be in this region around order one or it can be can be pretty large. But so I mean the most motivated region for this would be not to have C gamma gamma extremely large. So we want this to be yeah. I guess small as possible around the order one here, and um, and C mu mu can can be larger or also of order one. Yes, and so if we 
if we take this region and translate it, it back into this um, C gamma gamma um, versus the, the alt mass plane, then this was the red region that you saw on the, on the previous plots. Yeah, and so for, for larger masses, part of this hasn't been excluded yet. So yeah, some of these searches um, should, should be able to look for it and exclude a possible exp alp explanation of G minus two. Okay, yeah, so yeah, my summary that there are um, rare Higgs decays that provide a very powerful way to look for these alps and we can probe mass regions between 30 MeV to 60 GeV, um, which are suppressed by very large scales. And yeah, we can make this connection to the G minus two. And so, yeah, that would be really nice to, um, to, to close the gaps in the experimental searches and ex exclude this possible explanation. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, I can go back to the Oh yeah, so so it's 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 this red is this red band that can explain the G minus two. So and so you see that um here, I mean below um a hundred MeV or so it has all, the, the possible explanation has been excluded by all these experiments. But then here there is this bit that the I mean that the LHC yeah. searches don't quite reach yet, and so this could. On your uh, plot, where you showed us the coefficients, it was uh, one MeV, no? Or ah, sorry. Yeah. Yes, but this was for one. We can have very similar plots. I, I don't have them here now, but we can uh, make very similar plots for larger masses. So if you, you make it to uh, 100 MeV, the scale will be the same. Yeah, it's actually they look very yeah. they look very much the same. Yes, yes, yeah, we can go to higher masses. May I ask you, in this paper, yeah. the, uh, was it uh, a two loop diagram? Yeah, there were some two loop diagrams. Um, right, so somehow, yes, so in this. And this also two. Yeah, it's a two loop where you forget about the context. Here, yes. Ah, okay, so yeah. it's an effective. Uh, yes. Yes, but, but they do actually, they have more, they have more, I think, even higher, higher loops. <laughs> or to the diagrams. But in this region of parameter space, they're very, very small, so they give only a tiny okay, contribution. So yeah. yeah, but this is what they, mm -hmm. they discuss here. So did you try to play this game with a full uh, UV condition? Or? No, we haven't. Okay. No, no, we just did it in this, um, okay. yeah, this effective framework. Other questions? Can you go back to the, the previous slides? So, uh, yeah, this one, yeah. This, uh, do you know the... Uh, just a comment, I'm not yeah. sure, but uh, because I didn't look into this search carefully. So, why they stop at the. I, maybe it's again isolation, why they stop at 10, uh, 10 GV? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Because I think that uh, is this, no? Is this is probably the, your. The Higgs is boosting the, the ALP yeah. by, a, by a, an amount that is uh, the mass of the ALP over the mass of the Higgs, because the Higgs right. is produced at rest, right? So, yes, exactly. and the separation, you need it bigger than 0.4. So that is 10 GV is roughly, uh, I would say, the, the, the value that... Uh, yeah, this is what you mentioned, right? The standard isolation to break down. So, yeah, maybe, but then I guess they maybe did it's trivial to extend it. But then they did something, something more sophisticated for the Higgs 2, 4 gamma for lower masses. What? No, sorry. Then I guess they did something more sophisticated for 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 these ones. No, there they are not doing it. That, that I know. They are yeah. not doing. Uh, I mean, they, they, they down there they are just using diphoton uh, trigger, so uh -huh. it's completely yeah. because the, the two gamma are indistinguishable from a photon. Right. But what I'm just saying is that in the middle so this gap, you yeah. can just draw a flat line because it's just that they don't want to do that, but it's just. Oh, here, you think it's just like that? There is no, no gap. I'm just saying there is oh, no okay. gap. It's, it's just that they... Yeah, but they, but they should do it, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Yes. All right, so. So, another question, so we die today.